In this week's video, I will show you the prepatellar quadriceps continuation, which is a structure connecting the quadriceps tendon with the patellar tendon and can be confusing if you have a tear or a partial tear of that structure. If you type in prepatellar quadriceps continuation in PubMed, you will only find two articles dealing with that. One from AGR from 2009, and this is in diagram here, where you can nicely see how this actually looks like. And we have the patella, we have the quadriceps tendon and the patellar tendon. And there is a continuation here between these two tendons that is connecting those two. Now, normally it's firmly attached to the cortex of the or the anterior cortex of the patella, and you will have a hard time separating it. Now, this is the continuation and the thick blue stuff here is the prepatellar bursa. Now, interestingly, there's also a long blue line here, which doesn't have a name, but we will come back to that later. So let's first have a look at what the anatomy normally looks like. And this is probably how you all would imagine it. We have the patella, we have the quadriceps tendon with all these different layers and the most anterior layer here being from the rectus femoris. Then it's inserting onto the superior pole of the patella. Then we have just bone, maybe some bursa here, and then we have the ligamentum patellae or the patellar tendon. And also on the transverse sections, we have this striation here, which is normal. Then we have just the bone with this black stuff here, most likely just being the anterior cortex. We have the retinacula on both sides going down here into the ligamentum patellae. But sometimes you will notice that there is something else and you can start to understand here in this case how and why. So we have here a nice example of the three layers or sometimes even more from the quadriceps tendon. And if we follow the most superficial layer down here, you will start to see that we have something going on here. So we have some signal here between the bone and this black line that looks like it's a continuation here. Then we lose it because we just don't have enough signal there to separate it. And then it's in continuation down here. On our transverse sections, quadriceps tendon, we have this striation, then we have the insertion, and then we have something here covering the anterior surface of the patella, which seems to be connecting down here to the patellar tendon. So if you will, this is just a very, very small prepatellar quadriceps continuation, and it seems to be frequently there, normally not separable from the underlying bone, but sometimes you can see it. So before we move on, I would like to say uh, thanks to a lot of new patrons that joined my campaign here over the last few weeks. And it's really amazing how you guys are supporting my YouTube channel here. I never uh, thought that this would even be an option or even possible. So thanks a lot uh, to Lenny for your pledge, really amazing, CK and also Joshua. Thanks a lot guys. Sebastian also, and especially a big thank to Jonas who pledged $100 a month, um, I think. You're crazy, I told you that already uh, on the phone. Also, thanks a lot to Susie, and thanks Chad for coming back, and also Dan for increasing your pledge to $50 a month. Also, you're amazing. All right, so, so many. So if you want to become a patron as well and want to join a bunch of people who really are passionate about MSK radiology and really uh, you want to help me out and support me, then go over to my Patreon page, check it out. There are different tiers available, six of them and pick the package that you think is suitable for you. And with that, let's move on. Now moving on to this case, you can see we have some pathology and thickening with partial tearing and tendinosis of the patellar tendon and some overlaying soft tissue changes here. Uh, looks like it's an older injury. And if we go up here on the level of the quadriceps tendon here, we can see the insertion. And this time you will start to see this very thin black line here that is getting bigger and we have some fluid down beneath. So this one looks very thick and it's thicker than a normal fascia as you would assume as you have all around the knee. And then we go down and instead of inserting into the patellar tendon we somehow lose it. So I think it's torn or it's an old rupture or tear of this prepatellar quadriceps continuation and you can also appreciate it here where we have this structure here presumably connecting the quadriceps tendon originally with the patellar tendon but then after some kind of a trauma then probably torn here sometimes you lose this 
prepateller quadriceps continuations halfway through, maybe as, as a variant or maybe also after a previous or old trauma. I don't know. Now this is a very interesting case and we can start off here on the level of the quadriceps tendon. We can see the most superficial layer here is from the rectus femoris. And here on the medial aspect we have a very very prominent tendon slip that is running all over the patella or medially from the patella to then blend back together with the patellar tendon. We have some additional tendon-like structures here that are split longitudinally from each other. You can see here this is the inferior portion. If we scroll down they have a split, a longitudinal split before they blend back together here with the rest of the quadriceps tendon. And around it we have some hematoma, fluid, whatever, and probably after a trauma here in this setting here. And very interestingly, in addition to this, we also have this other black overlaying very thin layer of tissue that is more or less blending with the rest of this uh, fascia, etc. And I think this is probably just like this this additional fascia that might be running over there. Maybe it's not present in all of the patients, but um, I don't think it's part of the prepatellar quadriceps continuation, or maybe this is just like a very extraordinary case. Now, interestingly, this patient came back six years later with a new trauma. This time we have a little bit more edema all around it. We can really see the separation of this fascia here from the rest of the underlying structures. And then the patellar tendon itself has also a partial tearing and this cystic formations etc. And we have a large edema all around. So from my understanding I would call this the prepatellar quadriceps continuation with the mentioned splitting and signal changes etc. And that for me would just be like a part of the a deep fascia that is um, running all around here these structures. And I wouldn't call this the prepatellar quadriceps continuation and uh, because it's clearly even overlaying all these lateral structures. So I'm not really sure. Maybe this is part of this uh, diagram where we have this blue line here because it doesn't have a name I think it's probably just this this fascia there. Now this is again an image from the HR article and you can nicely see with the arrow the prepatellar quadriceps continuation as an extension of the anterior or most anterior quadriceps portion the rectus femoris portion which then is disrupted somehow so they also said that this is a separation or a tear of the prepatellar quadriceps continuation. So this is the second publication on PubMed. It's a case report with a prepatellar continuation rupture and they have a radiograph, it's not revealing anything. And this is the image where they say it's a, a prepatellar quadriceps continuation separation or tear. And I think they refer to this signal here. Let me make this, oh, let me make this a little bit bigger. So I think they refer to this gap because they would assume that you have a black continuation up here. But if I look at this image with this large antisophytes up here, I don't think that there is a prepatellar quadriceps continuation in this case. But it's difficult to say image quality, especially this, as they say, PD fat set, uh, is not really good. So, uh, But I would be careful to call this based on this image alone. No offense, guys. So there you have it, uh, hopefully a new term in your arsenal. If you see a prepatellar quadriceps continuation, you can now use the proper term and impress your colleagues. If there is a tear or a discontinuation, you can really make a good diagnosis, I think. Now, if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also the like button because it really helps me out. Um, thanks for all your support, guys. Thanks for watching and recommend my channel to your colleagues if they don't know me already. Uh, because I post MSK related YouTube videos every week and with that see you next time